your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch for the far southwestern area of our viewing area. But overall, though, we're looking at uh, relatively spotty storm activity currently on our radar. We'll talk about that here in our full forecast in a bit. It's obviously, though, very warm and very muggy. 86 degrees in Champaign, 87 in Mattoon, 88 in Effingham, and 87 in Danville, which is where we have our Florida America weather camera up on our roofing dog on it. You can see the towering cumulus clouds of some nearby storms as these storms will be kind of forming along this boundary that you see here, represented with our wind, with them up to around 15 miles per hour. Our backyard forecast got a chance for some scattered showers and storms for the remainder of the evening. And then we're still talking about some spotty storms for the day tomorrow. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. There's a, a part of the community who has never felt that trust. The cry for change has been loud and clear. City leaders say they're listening. What they plan to do going forward. Well, really, for me, it's an act of God. Plus, a church was broken into and a fire set. The reason one pastor says it didn't burn down. This was very deliberate. And a dog was stolen from an animal shelter. It was returned, but there are still questions. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. People are are just tired of waiting for things to change, and I, I couldn't agree more. That's why city leaders in Urbana are trying to do things differently. George Floyd's death in Minnesota is forcing community leaders to take a closer look at how they operate. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. As protests continue throughout the country, Urbana's mayor hopes to improve the relationship between people who live there and the police department. WCIA3's Courtney Bunting has more. Urbana Mayor Diane Marlin says city leaders are still in the early stages of creating change in the community, but they want people to know that they hear them. Bottom line, our police department, like every other department in our city, is, is here to serve the community, to protect the community, and people have to have trust in the people who are doing that. Building that trust is something Marlin knows will take time, but she says groups will be meeting in the coming months to figure out how to do it. Those include the city council, the NAACP, and state police. They'll also take a closer look at their civilian police review board, which was created 12 years ago. Um, it's time to look at those policies and the structure of that and see what, what needs to be done to really um, update it to what our needs are today. Out of the 25,000 calls a year that Urbana police handle, Marlon says their use of force is minimal. But those are still things that need to be looked at closely. Our use of force involves maybe 150 incidents. So that's less than 1% of all the calls for service that we get. But those 150 incidents are the ones that um, can, can be the problematic ones. One example is the use of force investigation for a shots fired call in April. Officers were investigated for hitting Aaliyah Lewis. They were later cleared. While these discussions are still in the works, Marlon says they are past due. Well, there's a, a part of the community who has never felt that trust or believed that, that the police were there to protect and serve, and that's what we need to work on. Because on the whole, our officers are good people with good intentions, and they do their jobs well. But once in a while, you have um, incidents that, that that don't go as well, and those are the things you need to address. In Urbana, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Now, even though those officers were cleared for hitting Aaliyah Lewis, some aren't happy about what happened. And that was a big topic of discussion at Monday's protest. And some new information charges have been upgraded for the former officer who's responsible for George Floyd's death. The Minnesota Attorney General has also now charged the three other ex-police for their involvement. Derek Chauvin, who knelt on Floyd's neck, is now charged with second-degree murder. The three others are charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder. All four were fired the day after the death. Police departments across central Illinois are dealing with overtime after the unrest over the weekend. A spokesperson for the Champaign Police Department says they called in every available officer on Sunday. Their shifts were also extended from 10 to 12 hours long. In Urbana, some worked as long as 16-hour shifts, but they say most are working 12. The Champaign County Sheriff's Office also called in extra deputies along with Vermilion County. The departments say they won't know the exact total of OT until next week. 
A pastor in Danville says someone broke into his church and tried to set it on fire. But the building, thankfully, is still standing. WCI 3's Jamie Mays has the reason he believes why. But really, for me, it's an act of God. Um, I really feel like that's the only reason our church is still here today. Because this place of worship could have gone up in flames. On Tuesday afternoon, Pastor Kevin Little and his wife Emily walked inside Bowman Avenue United Methodist Church and found shattered glass. Someone had forced their way in. There were um, a couple of things knocked over, like a bench with a bunch of piano and organ music was knocked over. I was scared. I didn't know if somebody was still in the church or if that it had happened a while before and they were already gone. The pastor says someone came in through this window, then came into the basement and walked over to the kitchen, then put two old flags on the stove, turned all the burners up, and removed the dials and knobs. Just a couple of centimeters separated the flag from the flames. Like it's, it's a miracle that, you know, that it didn't catch. Those flags should have caught fires. And if they had caught fire, the batteries had been taken out of the church's fire alarm. The only thing they noticed missing was something used to keep bats away. At this point, they don't know why someone would do this. I hope that this person like has a chance to think, well, that wasn't a good decision. But their remaining grateful things didn't turn out worse. I feel like this was a good sign that this church isn't done doing work for God. Reporting in Danville, Jamie Mays, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The pastor and his wife contacted police. They say they are thankful they're still able to have church with their congregation on Sunday. Now, police have a teenager in custody after a Decatur church was vandalized. It happened at the Moundford Free Methodist Church. Police say 19-year-old Brandon Underwood broke windows, discharged fire extinguishers, and damaged TVs, musical instruments, and speakers. They also say he damaged a bus at the Lutheran School Association. Police say they believe Underwood was the one who called 911. They found him at the church, covered in blood, only wearing boxer shorts when arrested. A Bloomington man is behind bars accused of a hate crime. Police say 21-year-old Marshall Blanchard rode his motorcycle into a protest rally Sunday, hitting two people. It was being held in downtown Bloomington. One woman was hospitalized for injuries to her stomach. Another man went in for a hurt arm. This is an update. A minor pleaded guilty for her role in an Urbana home invasion. It happened April 28th. Three teenagers broke into a home on Pennsylvania Avenue. The homeowner put one of them in a chokehold. Devante Brown later died. The juvenile faces a potential sentence in juvenile justice for up to her 21st birthday. Two people were hurt after a shooting in Champaign. It happened last night at West Bradley Avenue and Bloomington Road. Police found shell casings when they got to the scene. Then they were told two men showed up at the hospital. A 39-year-old was shot in the arm. A 33-year-old appeared to have been hit in the face with a gun. If you know anything, call Champaign Crime Stoppers, County Crime Stoppers, the number right there on your screen. And Danville police were called this morning to the ER for a gunshot victim. When they got there, they found a 25-year-old man from Danville. He says he was at a party and outside the home on Virginia Avenue when someone came up to him and started shooting. There's no suspect information at this time. No one else was hurt. If you know anything, call police in Danville at the number there on your screen. A dog that was taken from a shelter has been found. Vermilion County Animal Regulations and Adoption Center said their shelter was broken into on Monday night, vandalized, and dogs were let out of their kennels. One was stolen. A person on Facebook reached out to a volunteer about the dog. They arranged a pickup and got him back this morning. The director says they are certain this was an isolated incident. This doesn't have anything to do with um, like the graffiti or the current ongoings in the world. This was very deliberate. The Vermilion County Sheriff's Office is still investigating. They were back up and testing for coronavirus today. Why the drive through only lasted until noon and also tonight. I encourage people to get out of their coffee zone. He's an Illini favorite. How Georgie is hoping to bring a light to many during a dark time. We've got some spotty showers and storms to talk about for the evening hours, including the pot potential for some of them to be strong to severe. We'll take a look at our almanac, though, because before the storms started to pop up, it was obviously very hot. 92 degrees was the high temperature today, way well above our average of 79. And coming up, we are looking at a hot and muggy forecast of storms still over the next few days, but it will be nice and comfortable for the weekend.